Welcome to my tutorial on how to put your own custom horn into an MTH locomotive. If you've been operating your trains for a while, you might have noticed that MTH tends to use the same sounds over and over again in their locomotives. And you might have known that you've been able to change out sound sets for later models. So if you had an engine from 2011, you could change it for a re-release in 2018. And while that's great, you haven't been able to put your own custom sounds into an engine until recently when a couple of computer engineers were able to reverse engineer the MTH sound files so and made a tool that you can put your own sound files into an MTH package and deploy it on your locomotive. If you're like me, and have several different engines of the same model type, I have many Genesis locomotives, you might want different sounds and different horns in each one of them to make them all unique. So today I'm going to be deploying a new sound set into this Genesis locomotive. Uh, I've rec I have a horn recording from a Genesis that I'm going to be editing, trimming, and looping put inside of this so whenever I press the horn button it will play my custom sound damaging your engine no. wow I've really screwed this up before we begin I would like to note that this is a difficult process and encourage you to play this a few times to get the hang of this before you start touching the sound file once you open up the MTH ADPCM software, every change that you make in the editor automatically saves. So then there is no undo button, so if you do make a mistake, you have to restart the whole process over again. So before you begin, just watch this tutorial over maybe one or two times before you start playing with the software. Just a couple of things to note. The MTH ADPCM software is not endorsed by MTH in any way. It's made by SciLogic, which is a third party that has no affiliation with MTH. Uh, since we will be creating a new MTH file, I would highly recommend you to have a backup of the original sound file. So if something does go wrong, maybe the horn sounds a little garbled, you can revert back to it without any difficulty. Please note that this is an unofficial process, so this is not validated or tested by MTH. So by doing so, you're doing it at your own risk, and I cannot be responsible for anything that happens to your engine. While this has worked for me about four times, I can't say that everything will go smoothly, especially if something does go wrong that I haven't seen or an edge case that I haven't tested. So you must do this at your own risk. So let's talk about some of the stuff that you're going to need in order to do this. You're going to need the DCS system, which includes the TIU and a transformer. You're going to need a Proto 2 or Proto 3 locomotive. It doesn't matter what era it's from, as long as it has Proto 2 or 3, you're fine. Even the 5 volt Proto 2 boards work. Uh, you're going to need a cable to connect your TIU to your computer. If it's a pre-revision L TIU, you're going to need a serial to USB cable. If it's a revision L or later, you're going to need a USB to USB cable. If you have the WIU already, the Wi-Fi unit with the mobile app, you already have the cable necessary, so you don't have to worry about buying one. You already have it you need I will walk you through and where to get it and you can view the links in the description of where I retrieved the files I needed uh, the first one is obviously the MTH ADPCM software and the DCS loader that was made by MTH uh, I'm going to be using audacity it's a free program it's an open source audio editor and we will be using socks to do a conversion with it it's also free. It's a command line utility, uh, but we do have a batch file that's going to take care of anything scary. 
Uh, I'm going to walk through on where to get those and how to download them, but I'm not going to show you how to install Audacity or SOX or the MTH software. It does come with a zip file or an executable. All you have to do is unzip it and run the exe and you're good to go. You're also going to need a horn recording, but I will discuss that in more detail about what to look for in a horn sound and where you can potentially get them. So in order to get started, the first thing that we're going to do is navigate to the Audacity website. You can find the link below. It takes a few seconds to load, but this is for some security reason. Once we're here, we're going to go down to the download Audacity page. It's going to take you to a variety of different versions and anything that's applicable to different machines. I'm using a Windows machine, so I'm going to download the Windows version. This is going to force you to download an executable file, a .exe. Simply run that once it's done downloading, and it'll be installed on your computer. That's all you'll have to do for Audacity. If you have any in trouble installing this, you can uh, search some tutorials to help you install that if you need to. Next, we're going to download Socks. I also put this in the description. This is going to take you to SorgeForge, which is a file sharing website. You can download it there. This is also an open source program, so it is free to download. This is going to operate the same way, where you get an executable file. All you have to do is just run the ex installer, and it will install automatically for you. Now we're going to install the DCS software that is required to connect to the TIU. This can be found on the MTH website under their download software panel at the top right hand corner. You can install this by doing the same steps as SOX and Audacity where you download an executable file and run it. I'm not going to actually download this because it requires me to enter some information and I already have this installed on my computer. But once you make your account and register your name and some other information, it will be transferred to a download agent which will begin the process to download it to your computer. Finally, we're going to install the MTH ADPCM software. I posted a link for this in the description as well. In order to download this, you're going to scroll down to the latest version. There should be a, a uh, icon that says new next to the version number. You're going to find whichever one is the latest. That's the one that we're going to be using for the software. We have already installed the other dependencies. So you don't need to worry about installing Audacity and SOX again if you haven't ran if you have already run the installation. Well, Audacity, SOX, and the MTH app are pretty self-explanatory to get up and running. I did want to explain how to get the ADPCM software working. And the first thing to do is to extract the files to a different folder. You can do this by unzipping. I believe Windows 10 does this natively, but you can uh, use a third party such as WinZip if you can't open up the zip folder, but I believe you should be able to. And then once this is done, I will show you how to start the program up. Basically, you go to your unzip directory and you look for the file that says adpcm.exe. It might take a while to locate this, and I would recommend turning on file extensions to make things a little bit easier. If you haven't done that already, all you have to do is select the View banner up at the top and check the box that says View File Extensions.
Once you locate it, you might have to agree to some permissions to run an executable by an unknown publisher. So make sure you just agree to that so it can access files on your machine. I'm going to create a new folder that's go that I'm going to place my sound set in. I'm going to navigate to the MTH website and pull the sound set that I wish to modify. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using the most recent Genesis file from the, I believe it's the 2020 catalog, and I will be modifying that for the rest of this video. And to do this, I'm just going to search for Genesis on their website. I'm actually going to search by road number so I can pull the one that I am looking for. I'm going to pull the file for 20-21-189-1. And clicking on that, I'm going to navigate to support and then select the Proto3 icon. That's going to download that .mth file as a zip file. And I will unzip this just as I have unzipped the file for the MTH ADPCM file. Now let's reopen the ADPCM software and load in the sound file that we just downloaded. So we're going to hit the browse button to navigate to our new directory that we have the MTH file. Then we're going to press the analyze button. After that we're going to scroll down to clip number 152 which is our horn file and then I will press the play horn button you can hear that that's the horn that's currently associated with the sound set. Now that we're all set up, take a second to notice the clip format. Ensure that the 4-bit IMA ADPCM is selected. If the 24-bit Big Endian signed PCM is selected, you will need a new sound file. It's time to edit the new sound. If you don't have a new horn that you would like to put into your engine, you can find one online. For example, you can do a Google search for train horn sound effects. You can download a couple zip files of various horns that people have used for train simulators. Or you can visit YouTube and you can find train videos of trains leaving stations or passing over railroad crossings. Uh, to do to extract the horn from these videos, you can use a YouTube to MP3 converter and download a sound file from that. I will be using a horn that was recorded from Amtrak 822 as it left a station and passed over a railroad crossing. So I will have about a two minute video that was recorded with by a video that I pulled the audio out of and will extract a single horn clip from that video. So to do this I'm going to open Audacity and open the mp3 file that I have for my recording. I named this AmtrakHorn.mp3. Now once this loads you're going to see spikes in the sound file. Each spike is a horn with the exception of the long one at the end. That's the engine sound as it passed the video camera. Once I find one out I like I'll delete everything that comes before and after it. Notice that this clip is about one second long. That sounds nice, but I still have some trimming to do. So I'm going to trim this down even more and blow up the sound file enough so that I can see where it begins and ends. Now that when I play it, it's a lot cleaner, and I still have the start and end of the horn as well that'll be necessary to provide a transition between no horn and horn. I will apply a high pass filter to this clip to make the horn sound a little smoother. To do this I simply select the entire clip, go up to effects, and scroll down to high pass filter. I'm also going to do the same thing to apply a low pass filter. That sounds a lot smoother. It'll play better on the engine.
With a lot of North American locomotives, the bell will ring whenever the horn is blown, and you can hear that subtly in that clip. I'm going to try to eliminate most of it by applying various effects and cutting most of it out in hopes to eliminate most of it. I don't think I'll be able to do it completely, but I'm going to make a good effort to at least make a little bit less noticeable. Now we're going to shave off part of the ending of the horn, right where it starts to fade to off. We're going to take that transition, and maybe a little bit right before it, so that we can make a nice loop. Let's take a listen. Now, go back to the MTH ADPCM and scroll down to clip 152. Take a note at the sample size, which is highlighted on the screen. It'll either be 11,025 or 22,050. And make sure that it's still clicked under the 4-bit IMA ADPCM. Whatever the value is, make a note of it. Now go back to Audacity. Notice the project rate at the bottom left-hand corner. Change that value to the sample rate recorded in the previous step. In this case, it is 22,050, so I'm going to overwrite the value that's already there. Next, I'm going to go to Tracks, Resample, enter the value that I previously recorded, which was the value of 22,050. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to right click on the clip name. I'm going to select split track to mono. I'm going to delete the bottom click by clicking on the X on the left side. Then I will go to file, export, export audio. I'm going to set the file name to amtrakhorn.raw. I'm going to save as type other compressed files. I'm going to set the header to raw headerless. I'm going to set the encoding to Vox ADPCM, and then I'm going to hit save, and then OK. Sometimes this doesn't work, and you'll get an error thrown that looks something like this. And to fix it, you'll have to close out Audacity, delete whatever you were working on, and then redo the steps previously, maybe one or two times to clear the error, but... This seems to be an issue on Audacity's part, and I don't have a solution for this, and it seems like it's a known issue. Next, we're going to minimize Audacity and open up the directory of where we just saved our file. We saved it amtrakhorn.raw. We're going to rename this to horn underscore 22050, or whatever your sample rate was in the previous step, and then we're going to change the extension from .raw to .vox, V-O-X. Then Windows will prompt you if you're sure that you want to change the file extension, and you're going to hit yes or OK. Next, we're going to go into the installation directory of the MTH ADPCM, and then we're going to search for the batch file vox to ima.bat. We're going to copy that file over to where our horn file is located in a different folder. And then once we're there, we're simply going to drag the vox file over top of the batch file and then hit it's okay to run. You have to hit more info first. And it brings you up with the command prompt. You just hit two random letters twice. It'll give you a success message. And you're going to see a new file with the extension IMA. Next, we're going to launch the ADPCM software. We're going to scroll down to clip 152. We are going to select Operation, replace clip with a clip read from an audio file. We're going to go down to the file selection menu and browse for the IMA file that we just created using that drag and drop command. The next thing you're going to notice is where it says Databyte. Now looking at the table I have on the screen, you're going to see various databytes for different Protosound 2 versus Protosound 3 and the dif different sample rates for each type of 
category. Since we're using the horn and whistle at 22050 hertz, I'm going to use 27 as my data byte, but if you are using 11025 hertz, you're going to name that data byte 2B. If you're not replacing the horn file, you have to match up the whether or not it's an accent or an engine sound and use the appropriate data byte for that. Now I'm going to browse for my IMA file and then I'm going to hit do it and I'm going to play that sound by hitting play clip. And you can see it works. Now you're going to notice that you can still hear the original ending for the horn. That's because I haven't replaced it. We're going to replace that next. To get our horn ending, we're going to go back into Audacity and cut off everything before the horn starts to fade away. We're going to repeat the same process as we did before to convert it back into the IMA format that we can use to load into the ADPCM. I'm going to name this horn ending dot raw. I'm going to hit OK, and then I have to go to the directory, rename the file to include the rate, and to change it to a .vox. I'm going to drag it to the batch file, hit two letters in the command prompt, and then I notice that the IMA has been created. I'm going to scroll down to clip 153. And then I'm going to hit Edit Clip, browse for the new ending, I'm going to select it, hit Open, hit Do It. Now I'm going to play 150. We can see that it played correctly, but I'm going to edit 154 through 156. Those are the single blast horns that come after if you hold the horn button in for a really long time. I don't want to inject those right now. Let's try and see if it worked. It did. Okay, let me get the next part set up. Now here comes a bit of the tricky part, is getting the sound to loop. Now you're going to notice that the long play button is disabled at the bottom. And this is because we haven't filled out the loop information yet. So we're going to press the Edit Index button. And you're going to see a couple values, the Start Address, the End Address, End Repeating Address, and the Start Repeating Address. Uh, the Start and End Addresses, we don't need to worry about. Those are automatically calculated. But we will have to change the End Repeating Address the start repeating address, and the state machine initialization. Uh, the first thing that we're going to change is the end repeating address. Uh, we want this value to be relatively close to the end address. Uh, this is the last uh, part of the sound file that we'll play before we start repeating the sound over and over again. So this is essentially the furthest in the clip that we will go before starting over. So we want it to be a little bit before the clip starts to fade away, if it does. So uh, this the, the, the values are represented in hexadecimal as opposed to seconds or integers. So if you're looking to say, I want to begin repeating at 0.8 seconds into the loop, uh, you will have to do a calculation or you can just play guess and check. And we have to do the same thing for the start repeat repeating address, and we're going to pick a value relatively close to the start address. Uh, you'll notice that there are some letters in there, and this is, and this is because hexadecimal uses 16 digits instead of the integer system, which, is, which uses values 0 to 9. We use values 0 to F, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. A, B, C, D, E, and F. So instead of carrying it, if you hit 10, you have to carry the one if you reach 16 or F. 
So I think it's easier just to play around with that. You're going to notice that at first I'm going to choose a repeating address that's too close to the start address. Just to show you what happens if you do pick the wrong value that's too close to the start of the clip. So if you'll remember that the clip I'm using has a bit of a start to it, has a little bit of a quill in the horn recording, and we want to select a value that's a little bit after that. That way we don't have the quill every time the horn repeats. So I'm going to show you how that works. Uh, the second thing to note is the state machine initialization. Uh, you don't know how you don't really need to know what that does or how the state machine works other than that, that it affects the volume of the clip as well as the dynamic range uh, the only values that i'm going to change are the first two digits uh, which are uh, of that six digit number uh, that is represented in hexadecimal too and the first two digits only affect the volume of the clip I'll show you what I mean by that by doing this example. So now that I have chosen a start and ending repeating address that are relatively close to their respective endpoints, I will now play the horn to see what it sounds like in its current state. I will press the long play button. As you can see, I selected a start repeating address too close to my start address because you could hear the beginning of the horn play every time it looped. So I'm going to increase the start repeating address a little bit to see if I can get past that. It sounds a lot better, but now the clip seems pretty quiet. I'm going to increase the state machine initialization value, the first two digits, to see if I can get it higher. That's still pretty quiet. I'm going to do it again. That's still too quiet, so I need to increase the first two digits a little more. That's a lot louder. I still need to fine tune this a little bit. I think one more will do it. Ah, the volume sounds much better there. You can definitely hear where the sound begins to loop, but when you factor in the engine noise, you won't hear it as much, just as long as the volume is consistent. If you want a perfect loop, you can fine-tune the addresses a little bit more, but I'm going to leave mine as is. Now we're going to go back into Audacity and make the crossing effect sound. You'll notice in real life that the real crossing sound is a long, a long, a short, and a long. So I'm going to pull those clips together and create a new Audacity file, similar to before. So that's my first long. I'm going to duplicate this clip one more time and place it right next to and right after it. Then I'm going to go back to my original file. I'm going to grab a short clip, uh, copy that, and paste it over right after the last of the long. And then I'm going to copy another long and place it right after the short. I'm going to play it to show you what it sounds like. Sounds pretty good. That definitely sounds like a crossing effect, but I am going to trim this a little bit to make it seem more natural. So I'm going to take off some of the edges and I'm going to export this in the same way I did before using that raw headerless file. It looks like I ran into a 
front. Oh yeah, I didn't uh, convert this to my my rate. So if you if you don't set the sample rate, uh, you are going to run into that issue. You're not going to corrupt the file, but it's going to give you a warning. Uh, then you can go ahead. And so now we go back to the directory where we just saved that raw file. We're going to append the sample rate to the end of it and save it as a .vox. And we're going to say yes, I want to rename it. We drag and drop it over to that .bat file. Hit two letters. And then we go back to the ADPCM. We're going to navigate where the crossing is stored, which is address 42, I believe. I'm going to play it just to make sure. Yep. So that's the default one, so I'm going to replace this clip by going to Edit Clip and selecting my crossing one, hitting Add, and then Do It. And then now I'm going to play it. So you can sort of hear the crossing bell, but that's okay. So like we did with the crossing, we're going to apply the stop, forward, and reverse sound. We can see they're stored in similar locations. So those are the default ones. So I'm going to go back into Audacity and get rid of the longs and just inject the short blasts. So I'm going to go back to the original, create a new track, a new project and copy that short blast right in there. I'm going to try to trim around it. And then I'm going to paste it right back into Audacity. And this will be our this will be our stop signal. So I'm going to follow the same process as before. Trim a little bit of the excess off there. Uh, I gotta change the sample rate, resample the the file to the value that's stored in the sound file. I'm gonna delete that extra track. I'm gonna export it as the raw with the Vox encoding. I'm gonna hit save and then OK. And then I'm going to duplicate that sound clip to make it the forward sound. Audacity is a little bit weird sometimes, so I have to drag that over. And then I'm going to export this. Oh, that's good. So I'm going to export it in the same way. I'm going to call this either two toots or forward sound, whatever you want to call it, works for you. Uh, I'm going to add the third clip for the reverse sound. And I'm going to export that as I did the other two. Now I do have to go back and convert them to the IMA format with the batch file. I have to rename them first uh, just for uh, the purpose of that batch file. It requires the sample rate attached to it and the correct file format. I'm going to do that for all three files. And one more. I'm going to drag them all over, hitting two characters at random. 
And that's the last conversion that we need. Everything was successful. I'm going to replace sound clip 41 with the stop signal. I'm going to hit do it. And then I'm going to that worked. So I'm going to go to the next one. Which is 43. Do that and then hit the do it button. Play it. Sounds good. Then I go to the next one. And I'm going to replace that with the three reverse signal. I'm going to hit OK and do it. Alright, that's our MTH file. I think we have covered everything. So now I believe we're going to be ready to, to deploy it. So I'm making sure everything still works. Okay, so now we're ready to deploy our sound set to the locomotive. So the first thing I'm going to do is come to where the TIU is. And with uh, having track power applied, if you had, if you don't have your DCS set up already, you can find a tutorial to show you how to set up the WIU to the TIU. Or if you don't have the WIU, you're going to need the programming cable that goes from the TIU, which is this, to the computer. Uh, so I'm using this RS-232 to USB that actually plugged into my WIU over here. I'm just going to pull a connection out of this and put it into the laptop. But I know some of you have the newer revisions where you have the USB coming into your TIU. Uh, you can use that as well. It, that, that doesn't make a difference, but in the process I'm working on uh, doesn't necessarily require you to have a revision L TIU. You can use whatever you want. So now we're going to deploy the sound set to the locomotive. So we're going to open up the DCS loader. Uh, since everything is connected to the TIU, we should be good to, good to go. So I'm going to hit send sound file to engine. I'm going to hit start. Uh, my locomotive is already on the track. It is the only locomotive on the track, and that is important. So I'm going to navigate to where the sound file is. Uh, we don't need to hit save on the MTH ADPCM since it saves automatically with each change. I'm going to select it, and then I'm going to hit start. Uh, it does take a little bit of time, so I edited most of that out. It takes about 15 minutes, but once it's done, it's going to tell you that it's been successful. So once the sound file is done uploading to the engine, it starts up automatically. So here's where we're going to tell if it worked successfully or not. If I press the horn button and we hear a new horn, it worked. I think that sounds pretty good. We did it. So, hopefully you had similar results when you tried it. Uh, and this is the proof of concept. You can hear it looping a little bit, but if you turn the volume up a little bit more, you turn the engine sounds on, you won't hear it after a while. But, if you don't like it, you can try the process again, making the audio clip a little bit cleaner each time, but I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you learned something from it, and if you have any questions about it, uh, shoot me a message and I can try to help. Alright, well thank you for watching. Now before we go, let's do a run-by and test all the other sounds that we added. Here's, we're going to try the double toot, the reverse sound, the single blast and the crossing sound.
Sounds pretty good to me. Let's do a run-by.